All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us again today. Um, before you head off to Scandinavia, we wanted to reach out to answer questions you may have about what to pack, uh, currency, where to meet your tour director, etc. First, I'll go over some general information, answer some questions that were submitted on the registration form, and then at the end of the presentation, I'll open it up for any additional questions that you may have. Um, again, if you do have questions and you don't want to forget those questions, or wait till the end, you can go ahead and type those down in the bottom right hand corner and uh, one of my colleagues or I will answer those questions either throughout the presentation or at the end. So my name is Amanda and I'll be um, your host today. I'm the manager of sales and marketing for Brecky Tours and if you have any questions that I don't answer for you today, please feel free to contact us by phone or email. I also invite you to visit our website as you'll find a variety of information about traveling in Scandinavia and beyond. I know some of you had questions specific to your escort tour, and I may not answer those online today, but we'll be sure to reach out uh, via email with those questions after the webinar. Now, a couple of weeks before you depart for Scandinavia, you can expect to receive a packet of information from our office. You can expect one packet of information per couple. In the packet, you will find the following, a departure letter with some basic information pertaining to your specific tour, a final tour itinerary, your final flight itinerary, luggage tags, contact information for the hotels you'll be staying at while on tour, airport information, and any additional information that might pertain to your particular tour. Now, some documents are more important than others. For instance, please double check to make sure that your passport is valid for at least three to six months after your return date and that you have a copy or two of your passport. Be sure to leave uh, be sure to pack your passport and a copy in your carry-on. Uh, you may also want to leave a copy of your passport with a family member or friend, which can be sent to the U.S. Embassy in case your passport is lost or stolen while overseas. Please take a few minutes to ensure that the name listed on your airline ticket matches your passport name, and this includes your first, middle, and last name. You may also want to keep your airline receipt to ensure that your miles are credited to your account. The airlines are responsible for crediting your points to your frequent flyer account. Thus, if your account balance is incorrect, please contact the airlines directly. And finally, if you've booked any independent services with us, um, such as a pre or post tour stay, please review your documents before departing the US and contact us immediately if you notice any errors or if you have any questions. Please note that the vouchers will have emergency contact numbers in case you need assistance while traveling. And finally, please note, uh, or please be sure to note any special instructions on your vouchers. For instance, some train vouchers may need to be exchanged for an actual ticket before you board the train. So we had a lot of questions about luggage, and so I just wanted to take a little bit of time to address um, some general luggage uh, allowance, um, I guess rules is what you want to call them. So on the land portion of your tour, we do allow one suitcase and one carry-on bag per person. Luggage handling at most hotels is provided for one suitcase, thus your luggage will be delivered and picked up at your room at the beginning and end of your stay. We do provide two luggage tags per person, thus please put these tags on your large suitcase and carry-on. You may also want to put a label with your name, address, and phone number inside your luggage in case your tag becomes separated. And I apologize, uh, that should be one luggage tag per person. So you can put that either on your large suitcase or your carry-on, depending on which one you want to do. Uh, most airlines do allow one free piece of checked luggage on international flights. If you do have any domestic tickets booked in conjunction with your international flight, the airlines may charge a baggage fee. So you'll want to be sure to check with your airline before departing to see if any fees will apply. Now, typically your checked luggage can weigh up to 50 pounds, and the, but the dimensions cannot exceed 62 inches. So a standard large roller bag is what we recommend that you use. 
Now for your carry-on, typically the weight cannot exceed 22 pounds and the dimensions should not go over 45 inches and that's length plus width plus height. So as luggage allowance and limits can vary from airline to airline, we suggest that you check with your airline directly. And so here are some, some of the websites um, for most of the airlines that will fly on on our tours. We also had a lot of questions about what to pack. So inside your suitcase, you'll want to pack the following casual clothing, which is totally appropriate for all of our tours. For the nights that we have dinner included, you may want to bring slacks and a nice shirt or a blouse. The Scandinavians do like to dress up for dinner, but it is completely optional. Clothing that can be layered is recommended as temperatures can change depending on your travel during the day. Good walking shoes are a must as sightseeing along cobblestone streets and walking in the mountains of Norway is not really the place for heels or flip-flops. A raincoat with a removable lining is a good choice, or you may choose to be bring a rain poncho. A light coat or jacket may be necessary in the morning and evening. And you may want to bring a swimsuit if you'd like to enjoy any of the pools or spas at the hotels. And finally, we always recommend to leave your valuables at home. If it will create an emotional or financial hardship, it's best to leave it behind. Now, in case your luggage is delayed, I do recommend packing a change of clothing in your carry-on bag. And if you're traveling with someone, put some of your clothes in their suitcase and vice versa in case one bag is delayed. If you're planning to visit family or friends in Scandinavia, you may want to bring a small gift, especially if they're extending their hospitality in some manner. Appropriate gifts include an American flag or windsock, books, calendars, caps, t-shirts, or other items unique to your city or state, college or professional sport clothing or caps, Native American or country and Western themed items, liquor or liqueurs, and then for kids, you can bring Disney clothing, candy, puzzles, or cartoon characters. So some additional items that you may wanna throw in your suitcase include an extra memory card and batteries for your camera, snacks and a refillable water bottle, washcloths. And so this is something that we always tell people because a lot of the hotels in Scandinavia don't have a washcloth in the bathroom. So if you're like me and you like to wash your face at night, um, you might want to bring your own tissues, sewing kit or safety pins, medications, and this includes prescription and over-the-counter. Uh, Band-aids and a first aid kit are also something you might want to put in your back in your suitcase. A converter or adapter, and we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail in a minute. Sunscreen and sunglasses, extra eyeglasses or repair kit, and on the flip side of that, extra contacts and solution. Maps and travel information, a spot remover such as a Tide stick or wipes, an inflatable pillow and eye mask, an umbrella or poncho, a journal to record your favorite memories, a small day pack for sweaters, camera, snacks, and water, and then plastic baggies. So if you happen to visit one of the swimming pools or you go to a spa and your swimsuit is still wet the next day, you can just throw it in a Ziploc bag and that way it doesn't get the rest of your clothes wet while you're traveling around. So the climate in Scandinavia is very similar to that of the Northeastern United States, though it's rarely as hot in the summer or as cold in the winter. Average daytime temperatures in Fahrenheit for June, July, and August range from the high 40s to the mid 60s. It really just is depending upon your region of travel. And it's always a good idea to check the weather forecast before you depart the U.S. So here we're going to talk about the converters and adapters and what the difference is. So the world runs on two types of electricity, 110, 125 volt, or 220, 240 volt. So North American devices run on 110, 125 volt, while the majority of the world runs on 220 or 240. So the label on your device will help determine if a voltage converter um, is necessary. And so that is the large white box that you see here, and then it's got the little adapters. Um, 
So to find out if your device is dual voltage, you'll want to look for a label that might be directly um, adhered to the back of the device. Uh, on the AC transformer box of the power supply lead are molded in the plastic on the plug. And it's often very small and very hard to find. So you might have to look around. So if your device is dual voltage, that means it works with 220 or 110, then all you need is the adapter. So you just need the thing to change the plug um, from our plug to um, the Scandinavian plug, which is the two round prongs. And these typically sell for about three to five dollars. So if your device is not dual voltage, um, then you will need the converter. And these are typically twenty five to thirty five dollars and can be found on Amazon and Best Buy and things like that target. So the next uh, kind of topic that we're going to talk about is currency. So Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and Iceland each have their own currency known as the kroner. So in Finland, they use the euro. These currencies are not interchangeable. So Norway has their Norwegian kroner, Danish kroner, Swedish kroner, and Icelandic kroner. The easiest place to exchange your money is at your arrival airport. You can also exchange money at banks and at some post offices. Your tour director can assist you with locating an exchange desk or an ATM upon your arrival in the Scandinavia. You'll find that most major credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, and in some larger stores, American Express, are honored. And some hotels and stores um, don't even take cash anymore. So they, they are fully um, credit only. Um, one thing to watch out for is foreign transaction fees with your credit card. So before you depart, we recommend that you contact your credit card company um, for two things. First, to let them know that you will be traveling outside of your home area so that your cards are not suspended or they'll put the fraud alert on them. And then also um, just to find out what the foreign transaction fees may be. So if you have a Visa and a MasterCard and one is lower than the other, you may want to take that one instead. Uh, another um, good idea is to take a picture of the front and back of your card in case it's lost or stolen. And that way you can, um, you'll know who to call and that way you can get a new card sent to you. Now, ATMs are readily available in larger cities. And please note that some hotels and shops are cashless. Um, so that's just, um, so cash is not accepted. You can use your credit card even for small transactions. And we don't recommend taking traveler's checks. So if you're out and about and you're shopping and uh, you're in a Norwegian store and you want to pick up something that is um, 500 kroner, uh, you can divide by 10 to get kind of an estimate of what the amount will be in US dollars. And then I've listed some, um, some of the other currency out to the side over here just to kind of give you a quick exchange rate. And then for Euro, you'll multiply uh, by 1.1. So if you are planning to travel to Minneapolis for your departing flight, you may be interested in our park and fly special in conjunction with the Hyatt Regency Bloomington Mall of America Hotel. Uh, so it's near the South Airport entrance and rates are $162 for a king or two queen bedroom, which also includes 10 free days of parking. You also get a shuttle to the Minneapolis Airport and the Mall of America, and they also have um, you know, local restaurants right there at the hotel. So you can just drive in, relax, spend the night, and then the next day take the shuttle to the airport before you depart. If you are flying on Iceland Air, you will be departing on from Minneapolis in Terminal 2. So uh, in Minneapolis, there are two terminals. Terminal 1 is Lindbergh and Terminal 2 is Humphrey. Iceland Air serves Terminal 2. If you have a domestic flight arriving into Terminal 1, there is free transportation between the terminal buildings. All Iceland Air flights will route through the Keflavik Airport in Iceland, so you will change planes in Iceland. Uh, you'll need to show your passport at the customs, uh, or passport control, they call it passport control, before heading on to your next gate. Um, you do not need to collect your luggage in Reykjavik. It has if it has been checked through to your final destination. 
And then during your flight with Iceland Air, you can expect free in-flight entertainment. However, um, food is for sale. So if you want to bring food on board the plane, you certainly can. Um, there are complimentary water, soft drinks, tea, and coffee available on board. Um, but if you would like to purchase something for to eat while you're flying, then that is something that you, you'll have to do on board. For those of you that had requested a window or an aisle seat on your tour application, we will send that in to the airlines, um, and but we can't guarantee that they will not change the seats or cancel them or move you. Um, if we're not able to assign the seats at the time of booking, you'll be assigned a seat when checking in for the flight. So as, as much as we would like to control where you guys sit on the plane, it's not our call. So we will request it. Um, but just know that the airlines have the final say. Now, if you're flying on SAS, if you're departing from Minneapolis, you may depart from either terminal. Uh, it just depends on your flight schedule. Uh, so please check your boarding pass and your the departure screens at the airport for terminal and gate information. If you're departing from O'Hare, SAS typically departs from Terminal 5, but again, please be sure to review the updated gate and terminal information at the airport. You may also have a code share flight in conjunction with your SAS flight. Uh, for instance, you may have a domestic flight with United Airlines. You will have at least one layover en route to your final destination in Scandinavia. So when you arrive overseas, you'll need to proceed through passport control and signs will direct you where to go. Now, meals are complimentary on SAS international flights. <coughs> Please advise us if you have any dietary needs or food allergies so that we can let SAS know um, so that they can have an appropriate selection available for you on board. And again, uh, your seat requests are noted and we certainly do submit those, but the airlines will have the final say once again. After your flight arrives, um, to avoid some jet, jet lag, we do have some tips that you might wanna try to um, keep you up and going. So first off, try to sleep on board. If you have trouble sleeping, try over-the-counter sleep aids. You may also want to bring an eye mask, earplugs, a blanket, or a pillow if that will help you sleep. Bring a toothbrush and anything else which isn't a liquid or a gel that you need to help freshen up before getting off the plane. Wear loose fitting clothing and wear comfortable shoes. Try not to take them off as feet occasionally swell during long flights. When possible, walk up and down the aisle to stretch your limbs and get blood circulating. Drink plenty of water while on the plane. Avoid alcohol, caffeine, and carbonated drinks. Avoid wearing contact lenses in flight because cabin air does tend to dry them out. If you do tend to get air sick, drink a small bottle of ginger ale before boarding and pack a newspaper in your carry-on. The ginger ale will help calm your stomach and so will the smell of newspaper. After arrival, spend a lot of time out in the sunlight. This will help your body reset its natural time clock to coincide with your new surroundings. Airport transfers in Scandinavia are included for passengers arriving or departing on designated flights of our escorted tours. So after you deplane and collect your luggage, you'll proceed through passport control. You'll see two exits, green if you have nothing to declare and red if you have something to declare. You'll choose the appropriate exit. And after leaving the customs area, you'll continue to the arrival hall where you will meet your tour director. And they're pretty obvious. They're standing over there with the sign that says Brecky Tours on it. If you are arriving on a different flight from our group, you are welcome to join transfers provided that the arrival time is similar. So please be sure to send us a copy of your flight itinerary and, um, and let us know if you would like to participate in the group transfer. If for some reason your flight should be delayed, you would then be responsible for your own transportation to the hotel. If your arrival time does not coincide with the group transfer, not to worry, you can choose from several modes of transportation from the airport to the hotel. Airport buses with frequent departures run from the airport to the city center and vice versa in each of the Scandinavian capitals. 
Trains and taxis may also be available from the airport to the city center. It may then be necessary to take a taxi from the central station to the hotel. So if you are flying into Oslo and you want to take the, um, the train to the central station in Oslo, um, it may be necessary to take a taxi from that central station to your hotel if you don't want to have to um, you know, walk with your luggage and that sort of thing. So you can meet the group at the hotel that night for dinner and dinner time is posted in your departure letter, which will be part of your um, final tour uh, document packet that we'll be mailing to you. The first thing you may notice about your hotel room is that they are quite a bit smaller than what we expect here in the US. All the hotels used in our itineraries do have a private bathroom with a shower, tub, uh, toilet, and sink. Um, not all will have AC, but most of the hotels in Scandinavia do have air conditioning now, so um, not, not to worry that you'll burn up overnight. Many hotels in Scandinavia will use key cards. Um, this not only provides you access to your rooms, but it also uh, controls the electricity as well. There's typically a box in the entrance of your hotel room where you can slip your key card in and it controls the consumption of electricity. Some hotels in larger cities will have a guest laundry room or offer cleaning service at an additional cost. For more information on these available services, please ask the front hotel's uh, desk staff. More and more hotels in Scandinavia are going cashless. Thus, you'll want to have a credit card handy for any purchases at the hotel. Nearly all hotels offer internet access in their lobbies at a computer station, and most offer Wi-Fi in the rooms as well. And before you set off on your own, grab a business card or a map from the front desk. In case you get lost, you can use the business card to ask for directions using the map in order to get back to your hotel. And most of the time you'll find a hair dryer, an iron, or a pants press, along with shower gel and shampoo in your room. Just to give you kind of an idea of what to expect physically on our tour, most days we'll, you'll depart from the hotel between 7.30 and 9, depending on the day schedule. A breakfast buffet is served each morning at the hotel, so you should reserve some time for eating before departure. Your guide will advise each evening on the next day's departure time. You can expect to arrive at your hotel each night around 6 p.m., sometimes earlier. On travel days, you will stop several times to allow for restroom breaks and sightseeing activities. While most tours are leisurely, you can expect to walk short distances each day and sometimes over un even terrain such as cobblestones. You'll also need to be able to climb the steps in and out of the bus. Restrooms can be located in lower levels of buildings and sometimes there are no elevators, so please be aware of this issue. If assistance is needed, we ask that you bring a qualified and physically able companion to assist you. And you can, of course, opt out of any activities while on tours. We leave that at your discretion. Motorized scooters are not suitable for any of our escorted tours. Because we can't unfortunately control the universe, things do tend to happen that are beyond our control. If something does happen while you are overseas and you need assistance, here are a few helpful tips. First, ask help from your tour director. From lost luggage to finding a good place to eat, your tour director is there to help ensure that your vacation is as carefree as possible. If you happen to leave your phone behind in your hotel room, need an injury seen by a doctor, or have something stolen, your tour director can be a huge asset in getting the help you need. Now, if you're on your own or haven't met up with your group yet, seek help directly from the source, whether it be the airlines, hotel, or car rental agency. If you're lost, ask help from the locals. Most Scandinavians speak English fluently, and you'll find that most are willing to lend a hand if asked nicely. A smile can open many doors. If you really need assistance right away, be sure to know how to place a call while you are in Scandinavia and what the local emergency numbers are. Emergency contact numbers will be included in your final documents packet. Please review and bring this document with you. If your passport goes missing, know where the U.S. Embassy is located so you can immediately start the process of getting a new one. 
And finally, be adventurous. Don't let one bad thing ruin what could be a great trip. And just think of all the stories you can tell everyone back home. And here are some just random tips that we kind of threw together that we'd wish we had known when traveling to Scandinavia for the first time. First, many thresholds in Scandinavia are raised and you'll find yourself stumbling if you're not careful. Also be cautious when getting in and out of any bathtubs in Scandinavia as they tend to be a little taller than the tubs we have here in the US. If you're out at a restaurant and you finish your meal and you might find that your waiter just comes and keeps checking on you, but they never bring the check. So if you find this happening, just kindly ask uh, for the check and you'll soon be on your way. And speaking of eating out, tipping in Scandinavia is not typical as many restaurants will include a service charge in your bill. You can leave a few kroner, you can round up to the next five or 10 if, for your waiter or waitress if they were attentive, but leaving a 20% tip is not necessary. Now, while we're on the subject of tipping, we do leave tipping to your discretion on the tour for the guides and the bus driver. You'll find a handy guideline in your travel tips guide on page four. You can offer trips uh, tips in U.S. dollars, especially for your tour directors that are based in the U.S., but local currency is usually preferable um, for the bus drivers and the local guides. Because your luggage will be put through the ringer on the way to and from Scandinavia, it's a good idea to pack liquids such as shampoo, conditioner, soap, or other liquids in Ziploc baggies to prevent any spills on your clothes. You may also want to bring a small bit of soap to hand wash any items you may, may want to rewear uh, while traveling. Another handy tip and one that we can't stress enough is to call your bank or credit card company before you leave the U.S. to let them know where you're going for how long and to expect some charges to show up. The last thing you want to have to worry about on your trip is how you're going to pay for things. Pack a couple of days before you actually leave. This will give you a chance to hopefully catch anything that you might have missed. And finally, pack some snacks to take along with you. Granola bars, trail mix, um, that sort of thing. You can use this space to bring home the items you purchased along the way when you return home. So now I'm going to answer some questions that were submitted on the registration form. Uh, the first one was, and we get this one a lot, is how much money should I bring? And this is really a hard question to answer because it depends on a number of factors, such as the length of your stay, the extent of your travels, and last but not least, your shopping and sightseeing plans. Our tours include all of your breakfast and most dinners. Lunches, however, are usually left up to you. You can expect to spend $5 to $15 for lunch in Norway, for instance. But if you eat a large breakfast, bring a snack with you, and eat a decent dinner, you'll find that you won't be needing lunch very often. Other expenses are usually of a personal nature, such as laundry, drinks at dinner, taxis, and gratuities for the drivers and guides. I would recommend bringing a bag of snacks with you for your trip um, and also pack an empty water bottle. So this will save you quite a bit of money. Um, the water in Scandinavia straight from the tap is perfectly safe to drink and it can save you two to three dollars on a bottle of water just by refilling your own each day. Um, and then, uh, so just to give you kind of an idea, usually when I go to Scandinavia, I might get $200 uh, from the ATM converted into Kroner and, and use that um, for my, my trip and using that for tips and things like that. And then the rest of the time, I just use my credit card because uh, most places are cashless nowadays. So you really won't be needing cash that often. Should you exchange or bring money for, from the U.S.? Um, so if your bank can exchange U.S. dollar into kroner or euro, then it might not be a bad idea to bring some money along. I would contact your local bank first to determine if they have kroner or euro on hand, and if not, can they acquire some? You may also want to inquire if there are any fees and what the rate of exchange would be. You can then compare this to the market value to see if you're getting a good rate of exchange. 
And then um, one of the easiest things really to get to get money out when you're in Scandinavia is just to go to the ATM at the airport and just um, just take money out um, from your checking or savings account and it automatically converts it into kroner or euro depending on where you're at. So how will I recognize others on tours? So after you get off your plane at your rival city, the easiest way to spot other Brecky tour participants is to look for the luggage tag. So we made our tags um, pretty bright for a reason. They are easy to spot. So not only will it help you easily locate your luggage, it will also help you locate potential friends while on tour. If you do decide to arrive early, um, and the easiest place to meet the group is at the dinner the night the group is scheduled to arrive. So you should receive the time to meet your group for dinner in your information packet, and typically it's around 6.30 or 7 p.m. Should I bring a cap and mittens? Now, personally, I prefer the chance to be warmer than colder. So if your tour includes time on a boat, which most of them do, or treks up north of the Arctic Circle or into the mountains, it's certainly not a bad idea to pack some more warmer clothing. You can always take a layer off if you're warm, but if you're cold and left those items at home, then you are just out of luck. Um, our seats assigned on the motor coach. So no, we ask that everyone on our tour switch seats on board so that everyone gets a chance to sit where they want. Will we see the Northern Lights? Um, so most of our tours are during the summer, so the Northern Lights will not be available or visible. <laughs> They're not available. They're not visible. However, um, you will be able to take advantage of the almost 24 hours of daylight that parts of Scandinavia experience between June and August. So if the Northern Lights are on your bucket list, I suggest returning to Northern Scandinavia between October and March. And this is the best time to see them. All right, a few more questions. Uh, do my medications need to be in pharmacy labeled bottles? Now the TSA currently does not require passengers to have their medications in prescription bottles. However, I would recommend taking a copy of your prescription or snap a picture of your pharmacy label um, in case your pills get lost or you need to replace them. Can I use my phone in Norway? So unless you have an international plan, your phone will probably not work. You can contact your carrier about um, an international plan. So if you have Verizon, contact Verizon or T-Mobile, thing, thing, thing. Uh, there are ways to make calls back home though when you are connected to Wi-Fi, either through FaceTime, Skype, or any of the other video chat applications. Just be sure to download them to your phone and try them out before you head overseas. Will I be able to wash my clothes? So if you're planning to pack light and wash your clothes while traveling in Scandinavia, you may be in for a challenge. Laundromats are pretty scarce. And some hotels do offer laundry services, but it can be pricey. Taking items that are easily hand washed in the sink and then hung up overnight to dry is a great way to keep your traveling garments smelling and looking fresh. So any tips or suggestions for souvenirs? So depending on what country or area you are visiting, there are some great options for items you can pick up to remember your time in Scandinavia. Postcards, Christmas ornaments, linens, magnets, music CDs, flags, clothing such as a Norwegian sweater, and small items are great for packing in your luggage for the return trip home as they're usually lightweight and small. Other items, if you have the room, might include trolls, a doll horse, Viking replica carvings, glassware, reindeer and animal pelts, candles, pewter, and silver items. Liqueurs are also popular, but you must pack those in your checked luggage. If you do need items shipped home that can be arranged, I would suggest asking at the shop if they offer shipping options to the U.S. You may also ask if they have an online store that you can purchase items and then have them shipped home. Um, if you'd rather wait until you return home to purchase mementos, we suggest visiting the mallofnorway.com. If you are planning to travel with a CPAP machine, 
it is considered a passenger medical device, such as a wheelchair, it's the same thing. Um, it will not be counted as part of your carry-on allowance. To bring one aboard, you must submit the make and model number in order to get authorization to carry it on board. This information must be entered no later than 72 hours uh, prior to the, your original departure time. So to submit this information, please send us an email at tours at brekkytours.com and we'll pass the information along to the airline. If your CPAP needs distilled water, you can bring a bottle up to 3.4 ounces in your carry-on if you plan to use the machine while on board the plane. And then we had uh, questions about tipping. So tipping is not included in the cost of your tour and is left to your discretion. While on tour, you can expect to have one tour director um, and they'll be with you from the time you land in Scandinavia until you depart. And then you'll also have local guides that will join you for short periods of time. And these local guides are there to provide in-depth information into the sites and areas you'll be visiting. And while your, your tour director is there for more general commentary to assist with issues and to keep the tour group entertained um, throughout the trip. So you'll also have bus drivers that will accompany you. If you have been satisfied with their service, we suggest the following amounts as appropriate. So $2 to $4 per tour for a local tour guide, $4 to $6 per day for your tour director, I'm sorry, for your um, bus driver, and then $6 to $10 a day for your tour director. If your tour director is based in the U.S., they may appreciate tips in U.S. dollar rather than kroner. And so now you know, and we're going to open it up for questions that were submitted during the presentation. I'm going to try to answer some of those. So let me go back up to the top. Um, let's see. <laughs> so we had questions about um, people that may have food allergies, food sensitivity sensitivities, that sort of thing. So if you have those, um, please send us an email with a list of things that you can or cannot eat. A lot of the times when we have um, dinner or breakfast at a hotel, it's a buffet style, so there will be options. Um, but if we're having a sit-down dinner at a restaurant, um, that is definitely where we'll want to get something um, substituted or, you know, an alternate dish for you. So please send us an email and that way we can prepare and let the, um, the food, you know, suppliers, whether it be a restaurant or hotel, know ahead of time so we can have an alternate option for you. Um, let's see. If you are leaving early and would like um, your tour documents a little bit sooner than the one or two weeks, please send us an email and let us know when you're planning to depart. That way we can be sure and get those to you before you leave because we want you, we want you to have all your information before you head overseas. So um, we had somebody ask about swimming pools and sauna. Um, Carl, I'm not sure exactly um, what tour you're on off the top of my head, but there are quite a few tour um, hotels throughout Scandinavia that will have uh, swimming pools or uh, spas. So we do always recommend that people bring their swimsuit. If nothing else, maybe you want to take a dip in the fjords. So if you're feeling a little adventurous. <laughs> uh, Carol, you had asked about gluten-free meals on the plane. That would also be another one where you'd want to send us uh, maybe an email ahead of time so we can pass that along to the airline so that they can make sure to have something available for you. So let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, oh, uh, okay. Beth had asked what to declare means. And I'm assuming that you're talking about customs. So um, for instance, when you are arriving in Norway, they, uh, they limit the amount of money that you can bring in, uh, liquor, tobacco, things like that. Um, most of the time, I would say nobody on our escorted tours will need to declare anything when they go through customs, um, because if, if you're bringing more than 25,000 kroner or something like that into Norway, you will need to declare that. Or if you're bringing an obscene amount of tobacco into Norway, you'll need to declare that. But if you're just traveling, you know, as a tourist, um, you're not, you're not going to start a business with anything that you're purchasing, 
um, to bring over there to sell, then you should be fine. So um, you can check out the uh, like TSA website, things like that to find out what, um, what you might need to declare. But for the most part, it's not anything that you would have to worry about unless you're wanting to go over there and start a business. Um, Laura, you had asked how many guides we will have. So just to give you an idea, you will have one tour director and that will be the person that um, meets you at the airport and will stay with you the entire tour. If you are visiting Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim, uh, Stockholm, Copenhagen, any of those major cities where we have a city sightseeing tour included, then you will have a local guide that will join the group for just a short time. It might be three hours, it might be four hours, it might just be two hours. And they'll give you general information about the city, or if you're going to a particular museum, they'll tell you more information about the museum. And so they're, they're very knowledgeable about just that city, that city's history, um, and they will be sharing information with the group um, about that particular town or particular place that you are visiting. So, so you could potentially, if you if your tour includes Bergen, Trondheim, and Oslo, you could potentially have three local guides that would join you. Uh, for the bus drivers, you may have one bus driver from the start to finish. And then um, you may have multiple bus drivers. So um, we do have local bus drivers that may just transfer you from the airport to your hotel or from um, your hotel to the train station or something like that. Um, so we may just have a local bus company do that, but then you'll have one bus company that takes you from Oslo to Bergen, for instance. And so, uh, so you could have multiple drivers but you should have one driver that would stay with you for several days. Um, let's see, do they take debit or credit cards? Um, so debit cards, I would use those more for like the ATMs. Um, I've, I've not really used my debit card while I was traveling at um, using it at a store just because I didn't want that charge, um, you know, in case my number got stolen or something like that, I didn't want it immediately taken out of my account with the credit card that's a little bit more safe while you're traveling. So, um, but I do bring both because I need my, my debit card to extract money from the ATM. And then I use my credit card when I'm making purchases at the store. So I hope that makes sense. Um, yes, your phone will take pictures, um, even if it doesn't work for calls. So that it's a separate feature. So you can still use, um, still use your phone as your camera. And what's really nice is that a lot of our buses do have Wi-Fi on board. So I remember going through the fjords and I was, I called my mom and I'm like, mom, look what I'm seeing. And um, so you'll, you'll find that the Wi-Fi on the buses is actually pretty decent. And, and then of course you'll have Wi-Fi at the hotels as well. So as long as you have, um, you know, a video um, application on your phone, such as FaceTime or um, I think a WhatsApp, uh, things like that, Skype calls, you can, you can make, you can use Wi-Fi to call back home. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see. Are these tips for each individual? Um, if I'm reading that correctly, so it would be per person. So if, if you have four people that you are traveling with and you are paying for all four people, then you would want to, um, you would want to tip per person. Hope that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so American dollars are Norwegian currency for tips. So if you were in Norway and your guide, um, your local guide would, and your bus driver are probably would be more more grateful to receive tips in Norwegian kroner. If your uh, tour director is American, then they would probably prefer US dollars, but Norwegian kroner, if that's all you have, then, you know, they're not gonna complain. So, um, so that, is, that is fine as well. And uh, Judy, you had asked about, they're gonna be flying on Icelandic air. I'm not sure what time you will actually be arriving into Oslo, but you will receive um, a flight itinerary and confirmation um, in your final tour uh, document packet. So, so just be sure and look look for that. Um, 
so uh, any recommendations on how to keep distilled water for CPAP with you throughout the duration of the trip? So I am not 100% um, sure how much water a CPAP machine will use. So I know for the plane, you can bring the 3.4 ounces, which they allow on board. If you do need more distilled water when you arrive, I would ask your tour director where you might be able to purchase some because there's probably, you know, a convenience store or a grocery store that, especially in Oslo or Bergen or Stockholm or Copenhagen, one of those larger cities where you can get some. And then you could probably just keep it on, on board the bus or, or in your checked luggage. Um, if, if you need, need more of it. So, uh, CPAP requirements. So basically the make and the model number, if you can email those to our office at tours at brekkytours.com, then we can pass that along to the airlines and then we'll, we'll be sure and get the approvals. That way you can take it with you on the plane. Is there a fee for using the ATM? That is all dependent upon your bank. Um, I know, so me personally, I have USAA, and so they don't charge, um, or well, they do charge for using the ATM, but then I get reimbursed for it. Um, so I would check with your bank to see if there is a charge for using the ATM overseas. Do the buses have restrooms? Some of them do, yes. So um, it's not something that I would recommend. Um, it's it's more of a an emergency it's there for the emergency type purpose um but the larger buses um the 49 passenger the 50 passenger buses will have restrooms and even some of the smaller buses will have restrooms on board but we do make a stop um usually every couple of hours so if um if you you if you feel like you need to use the restroom it is there but we do try to stop every couple of hours to let people get off and stretch their legs and maybe grab a snack that sort of thing uh, do buses have place to recharge phones? Some of them, again, do. They'll have the USB ports, and it really just depends on your bus. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't comment to every bus um, that we'll have on on our escorted tours this summer. But um, if you have, if you are worried about your phone or um, you know any of your electronic devices that can be plugged in with the USB, you can get a power. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but I call them a power brick. And I know you can get them from Amazon. You can charge that up um, and it can charge your phone. It can charge, you know, if you have um, AirPods, um, that sort of thing. So um, you could charge several different devices on those. And then at night you could plug that in and use it, you know, for a couple more days. So that might be an option if you worry about your phone running out of batteries while you're traveling around. And we still have some time for questions. If anybody has any other ones. Oh, thank you, Judy. This grocery store will have distilled water. Great to know. Um, so on the airplane, um, if you do need to use your CPAP machine, there usually are outlets um, at your seat. So um, yes. Uh, so that would be, that should be uh, fine to use. But again, if you are planning to bring your CPAP on board the plane and you're planning to use it, well, either if you're planning to use it or not, we still have to submit the information to the airlines. So we do ask that, um, that you send us that make and model number. So uh, yes, Carl, so um, you just turn your phone. Um, I would just keep it in air, airplane mode. As soon as you, basically, once you get on the plane, it just stays in airplane mode until you get back to the United States. And that way it doesn't drain your battery um, while it's trying to find a signal. So uh, do taxis take cash or credit cards? Um, you can use both, actually. Uh, credit cards are really widely accepted in taxis now. So that would be probably the preference. Um, but they probably do take cash, but just realize that some taxis could be quite expensive depending on um, where, you're, where you're going. Um, will there be transportation to the airport on departure? Yes, most of our tours do have transportation to the airport from the hotel um, for the departure. Now it will be, it's similar to the arrival uh, transfer that it will be for the group flights, but if your flight 
if you have booked your own flight and it's departing at around the same time, you're more than welcome to, um, to hop on that transfer. Again, just send us an email, let us know, and that way we can be sure that you are accounted for in our headcount. Uh, let's see. Can I check in with Iceland Air on their app the night before or just at the airport? Um, you might be able to check in before. Um, a lot of times, you know, you can check in within 24 hours. It really just depends. Um, you still have to show your passport, so you may have to do some additional steps at the airport. Um, most of the time when I have uh, flown overseas, I have checked in online ahead of time, but then I still had to do, I still had to go, you know, show my passport at the airport too. So, um, so it's just something to be aware of that you'll want to have a little bit more time at the airport just because of that. Uh, best map to buy before traveling. There are, oh, there are so many. Um, depending on where you are going to go, um, there are lots of good maps on Amazon. And um, Gary, I'm taking a copy of all the questions to make sure that we answered them all. So I will, I will send you some options um, for where you're going. So I'll, I'll look it up and we'll, we'll get that over to you. Uh, list points of interest within walking distance from our hotel. Okay, so Beverly, um, depending on where you're going, a lot of the hotels will have maps at the front desk and they're tourist maps, which is great because it does have um, a, attractions. And, and if you do want to get out and explore on your own, then I would definitely pick up one of those maps and, and then, um, if, there, if there's something close by. If you want uh, some specific ideas, please email us. We're more than happy to send you some suggestions, no problem. Um, so if you booked our flight, but we're leaving from Chicago, will there be transportation for us when we arrive and depart? Uh, Laura, that really depends on when you arrive and depart um, Scandinavia. So um, we will have in our departure letter, there's a, a time listed for the group flight um, arrival transfer and departure transfer. So if yours is close to that, then then you're more than welcome to, to jump on the transfer. So does medical insurance work in Norway? That will depend on your medical insurance. So that would be something maybe to um, ask them. If you, um, if you purchase travel insurance, that would be, um, that would be a good, you know, just an extra coverage. So let's see. Oh, oh Judy, thanks. Um, I bought a map by Marco Polo. It's very detailed, but large. It has a zoom system to show the town. So thank you, Judy, for uh, the suggestions for our map. Uh, if we're traveling with the group out of Minneapolis, do we need to check in for our Icelandic air ourselves? Yes, you will. So um, yes, you will need to check in. You will. We will be sending you a confirmation number. Um, that will be. It, it's just like any other flight that you have. You know, you'll have a booking confirmation number, and and you can check in um, once you know with that. So. And then if we have any other questions, please let us know. Um, if you do think of something later, I always think of something about 10 minutes after um, I get through talking. But uh, please, please feel free to email us. Um, and also uh, check out our helpful hints, which let me go back to um, our little tip guide, um, which hopefully you received whenever you registered for your tour. Uh, but just in case, it is available on our website. So there's a lot of information that I cover today um, that's also in these little travel tips. So if you want to read it in a little bit more detail for yourself, that's definitely the place to go. It's on our website. There's a across the menu bar, there's the resources, and it's, um, I think, the first one um, down on that little drop down menu. So. So definitely check that out. And if you need another copy, email us and we're happy to, to send that to you. And yes, you will get a, a okay, so you'll get a copy of your um, travel tips with your final talks. So uh, yes, so you can print or review all the tips directly from our website. So um, 
if you missed anything or you want to review anything. And then also I'm going to be sending a copy of this video to everybody that talks about um, or that has, you know, a copy of all the slides that we went over today. And um, let's see, was that the lar the small airport number two we leave out of for Iceland Air or large? So um, I'm assuming you're talking about Minneapolis. So you'll depart from Terminal 2. Let me double check that. Let me go back here on my notes. Mm -hmm. I believe it is Terminal 2, but my brain, my brain is kind of mush at this point. So let's see here. I don't want to give you wrong information. Well, if I can find what page I have it on. There it is. Okay. So yes, uh, you will be departing out of Terminal 2, Humphrey. So... Uh, if anybody has any other questions, please let us know. Um, there's our contact information. Give us a call. Send us an email. Um, we are more than happy to answer any questions that you might have before you head off to Scandinavia this summer. We are so looking forward to having you travel with us. And I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for everybody for attending. And have a great day.